this video we'll look into thermal regulation, the regulation of body temperature and the different homeostatic processes that support heat gain and loss. One temperature related classification for animals corresponds to where animals obtain heat from. Animals can be endotherms or ectotherms. Endotherms are warmed by heat produced via metabolic activity. That means that these animals produce their own heat. Most mammals and birds fall into this category. On the other hand, ectotherms obtain heat from external sources like the sun. Fish and reptiles are often classified as ectotherms. Even though animals can obtain heat from their own metabolic activity or from external sources, body temperature is not always constant and it can show significant variability. This brings us to another classification for animals. Those which are poikilotherms, having their body temperature vary with the environment, or homeotherms, which are animals that keep a relatively constant temperature regardless of environmental conditions. Animals need to balance their heat loss and gain as a way to maintain a specific body temperature. For this purpose, there are four major processes that animals use to regulate heat loss and gain. The first one is radiation which is defined as the emission of heat by objects warmer than absolute zero. An, ab an example is a laser absorbing heat from the sun. The second is evaporation. This is the removal of heat in the form of gas molecules from a liquid. This often refers to the evaporation of water via sweat. Next, we have convection, the transfer of heat by the movement of air or a liquid passing over a surface. For example, a breeze of warm air passing over the skin of an animal will deliver heat, which can be absorbed by the animal if the goal is to get warm. Finally, we have conduction, which is the transfer of heat between objects in direct contact with each other, like when a lizard sits on a hot rock. An additional consideration is the variation of body temperature is the integumentary system of an animal, which includes the skin, hair, nails or claws and which are often participate in the process of heat transfer. Now let's look at the concepts of insulation and circulatory adaptations. Insulation corresponds to an animal adaptation to reduce heat flow between the body and the environment. A good example are whales. These marine mammals often swim in cold waters but they need to maintain a warm body core. These individuals have a blubber an evolutionary adaptation corresponding to a thick layer of insulating fat under the skin. This blubber helps in maintaining a warm temperature without the need to obtain too much energy from food. The circulatory system also presents adaptations that help in regulating the amount of blood between the body core and the skin. The first process by which the circulatory system regulates the body temperature is known as vasodilation which is the widening of superficial blood vessels to release body heat to the environment. This lowers the body temperature. The second process is the opposite, known as vasoconstriction. Blood vessels get narrow and blood flow is reduced, minimizing heat transfer and conserving heat. Finally, we have countercurrent exchange between blood vessels carrying blood at different temperatures are shown in the figure. Notice how arteries moving warm blood from top to bottom transfer heat to veins moving colder blood from bottom to top. This heat transfer happens in vessels with opposite blood currents. Let's now discuss other forms of thermal regulation. First, the cooling by evaporative loss. This is what we often know as sweating, where sweat glands get activated to increase evaporation and reducing the body temperature. Some animals also behave in specific ways to increase or reduce their temperature. In cold environments, some animals expand their body surface area of parts exposed to a heat, a heat source, therefore increasing heat gain. Contrarily, some animals, like dragonflies, reduce their body surface area by adopting specific positions to reduce heat gain. Animals that encounter themselves in cold environments have the need to maintain or obtain heat. In mammals and some birds, heat is actually produced by different processes such as shivering. The production of heat is called thermogenesis. Another way in which heat is produced is by endocrine signals, which increase mitochondrial activity. Mitochondria switches from producing ATP to actually produce heat. This is known as non-shivering thermogenesis.
In body parts where mitochondria are abundant, we can find brown fat, such as the areas in yellow shown by the PET scan. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11th edition unless otherwise stated. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.